Hi, I'm Betsy Minton, and today we're going to be talking about how to use variables in block code. I want you to think about Mad Libs for a second. So this is the game where there's a bunch of blanks and you have to fill them in. So in this version, my mm went to the store. My mm went to buy some mm. The store was out of mm. My mm felt mm and decided to go to the mm instead. Each one of those blanks can be filled in with a word. And if you notice, there are some words that are the same, like person and family, or type of food. So in this story, we have four blanks we need to fill in to finish. So person and family, type of food, emotion, and place. The great thing about variables is it lets us use the same thing over and over again in our code. So if I say person and family is grandma, then the computer is going to take every time it says person and family, and it's going to put in grandma. Same thing with type of food. I'm going to say type of food is banana, and the computer is going to put banana in both places. I'm going to fill in the rest with emotion, say angry, and place, I'm going to say park. So variables are just placeholders. I want you to think of them as sort of like a box. So in our story, we're going to call this box person in our family. So person in family. Now you can call these boxes whatever you want. I can call it Bob but my code is gonna get really confusing if my names don't match what I'm trying to do. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is declare that this is a person in my family. So now I'm gonna say that person in family is grandma and I'm just gonna store grandma inside that box. Now you can have more than one box. So I'm gonna have two boxes, person and family and type of food. Let's go back to our sentence. My person and family went to buy some type of food. So now all I have to do is replace person and family with what's inside the box, which is grandma, and type of food with what's inside of that box, which is bananas. In order to use a variable, I first have to say what my variable is. So in this case, set person and family to grandma puts grandma inside that box. So first I have to set it or declare my variable. My variable is called person and family. And then I have to say to the computer what that is equal to. So in this case, it's equal to the word grandma. Now, if I was playing a video game, it might be a score and my score might start at 10 or my score might start at zero. So in this case though, we're gonna set it to person and family is called grandma. Now, in order to use my variable, I have to take it back out of that box and put it in my code. So to do that, I'm going to put it inside my code. So here I say, say hello, person and family, and it sticks the word grandma from my box and back into my code. All right, now let's go take a look at what this looks like in Scratch. All right, guys, so here we are in Scratch. Um, I've created a really simple little story based on our Mad Libs. So uh, if I click the cat, he's going to actually go ahead and read my story. My grandma went to the store. My grandma went to buy some bananas. The store was out of bananas. My grandma felt angry and decided to go to the park. Now, the cool thing again about variables is I can say, you know what, my grandma doesn't like bananas. She wants some meatloaf. And now when I click on my story, it's gonna say my grandma went to the store. My grandma went to buy some meatloaf. Now, why do we use variables? I could just sit and I could type in the word grandma in each one of these places where I have this variable and my story would be exactly the same. But when I have a really long code, every time I wanna change this one thing, person and family, I have to dig all the way through my code and change each thing. When I have a variable, all I have to do is change this one spot at the very beginning of my code where I say, what person and family is equal to, and it's gonna change it for my whole code. My dad went to the store. My dad went to buy some meatloaf. The store was out of meatloaf. My dad felt angry and decided to go to the park. Now let's take a look and see what these look like in code.org. So here I have my bee and he's gotta to get to this flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell my bee to go ahead and run for it. He's gonna go there and he's gonna get the nectar. Now. I want to use a variable because I think maybe this flower is going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to get a loop and I'm going to put nectar inside there. Now I could just write a two in there, but let's say my program has lots and lots of code and let's say the flowers change. 
all the time and I don't want to go back and find every single time I say get nectar and change that number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get a variable. And remember, the first thing I need to do is I need to say what my variable is called. So I'm going to call this variable gather. So I'm going to call it gather and then I'm going to go down here to a math block and I'm going to get a number. So in Scratch, we used a string or a word, and this time in code.org for, for this program, we're going to use a number. So I'm going to set this number to 2. Now, this is the number 2, and this is the number 2. These two things are the same. So anytime I wanted to use the number 2, I now come and get the word gather. And so every time this computer program sees the word gather, it's going to know to do something gather times. And gather, as we see up here, is equal to 2. So I've said what gather is equal to, and now I've used gather in my program, and I'm going to run it. And my bee got all of the ne nectar. So I've got the program written for this first little spot where my bee is going to move forward two times and get nectar two times. So I've added a repeat block here with again gather, which is two, and move forward. So my little bee should move forward two times and get two flowers. All right, so we're on our next problem, and as I can see, the times I need to move forward is now one, two, three, and I have to get nectar three times. So instead of having to change the number two here and here to three, all I have to do is come up to the top and change my gather to three, and the computer's gonna know that each time it sees gather, now that gather is equal to three. So when I run it, my bee moves three times and gets nectar three times. Remember, a variable is just a placeholder for a piece of information. You need to say what the variable's called, what it's equal to, and then use it in your program. To practice using variables, try variables and artist on code.org or the Scratch Make a Clicker Game tutorial. Thanks for watching.